Get to Know Your Rabbit is a 1972 comedy directed by Brian De Palma and starring Tom Smothers, John Astin, Catherine Ross, M. Emmett Walsh, Suzanne Zener, and Orson Welles. The film opens with our hero Donald working for some company doing something. It seems like Donald gets all the work, while his boss, Mr. Turnbull, chillaxes, leading Donald to decide to take this job and shove it. I ain't working here no more. Good morning. This is Miss Simmons, project coordinator for Up Against the Wall Incorporated. I'd like to inform you that our organization has planted a bomb on the premises of your office building. It's set to explode in six minutes. Listen, let me put you on hold for a minute. Bomb? What the fuck? Catherine Ross as a terrific looking girl. Gee, thanks for giving her character an actual fucking name. Donald leaves the office just as the bomb goes. <laughs> the next morning, Donald is in bed with his lady Paula when a piano tuner shows up looking for a piano to tune. And when he doesn't find it, the guy winds up making them breakfast. In the midst of all this, Paul learns that Donald has quit his W-9 job and plans on becoming a dancing magician. As he begins his studies, Turnbull plays bounty hunter and shows up with Donald's parents to try to get him back as a company man. He has Donald's parents flown in, they have a meeting in a shift robe, and then they get shipped back home by old Gomez. Fifteen minutes into this thing, and I am bored to tears. Paula once again threatens to leave, but Donald has brought home a rabbit. I said, is that a little homework? Oh, uh, each one of the students has issued one of these on enrollment, and uh, I thought I'd bring mine home because the instructor said one of the cardinal rules is get to know your rabbit. Title alert! And then they get it on! Turnbull continues his stalking and calls Donald in the middle of the night, causing Paula to cut off intimacy. I made a rule. You're not to come near me till you give up this crazy scheme of yours. When the hell did you decide on that? Yesterday afternoon. Yesterday afternoon. What about last night? Last night was an exception. I can't blame her. He wants to be a dancing fucking magician. Turnbull then shows up at the apartment in the middle of the night, trying to get Donald back. This is why restraining orders have exploded over the last 40 years. Turnbull ends up locked in the closet as Paula finally leaves. I'll do better. Hey, Paula, what about the... What about all... Donald, just say the word about coming a bad time. You know, get the fuck out of my house. Donald then goes into hiding by getting a room in a flop house hotel and changes his look to vintage depression era. Meanwhile in class, Orson Welles lurks while Donald dances. Yes, dance, monkey, dance! Donald arrives home and some guy named Vic drags him to a party in a tuna can. They pick up a girl and head somewhere. Hey, just leave it to me. We're gonna have ourselves one hell of a bash. In the meantime, Don, baby, I hope you realize I uh, got you in the back seat there with a real expert, huh? I mean, just one look at her, you can tell she's the type of cheap broad knows exactly what to do in the back of a car, huh? Wow, buddy, I think she can hear you. They end up at a woman's shop, which I guess is owned by Vic, and there's some modeling and dancing. Donald and the girl end up getting friendly, angering Vic because uh -huh. he thinks he's getting cut off and presenting his fine bra man. selection. Uh -huh. I step out of the room for a minute, you make your move. I know how this is gonna end. It always ends, same way. You can invite her up to your hotel room, very casual like, right? A little small talk first and cowy, right? Huh? You're gonna spring them right on her, huh? Those little fancy models with the seamless uh, lace trimmings, huh? Donald ends up getting it on with her, and she leaves on a boat. I guess the budget couldn't afford a real bomb voyage scene. As Orson Welles looks for fish sticks, Donald strikes a deal where he would get some extra coaching from the master. They wind up hopping in the sack. The young volunteer from the audience. Mm -hmm. Now, even though we are tightly sealed in the sack, I, the lovely young volunteer, will escape from the sack in a puff of smoke. I. And then Donald graduates. Here with us this morning. Will Donald Beeman please step forward? 
I'm sure Wells was paid in cash and boxed wine, not only for the training, but probably for appearing in this film. He signs a contract to tour with his act and has this tender moment with his mentor. Would you like me to look upon you as the son I never had? No, I don't think so. Thanks. He then hits the road for Elgin, Illinois and finds Turnbull slumming at the bus station after the collapse of the business Donald had left. He takes Turnbull to his hotel room and makes him an offer to manage his new career. This will go well. Wow, I never knew John Aston's hair was that thin. All the guy wants is an office and Donald delivers and then he finally hits the road. He arrives in Illinois! Come on. Yep, that's what's like living in Illinois. He delivers his first performance. I really wish I was as drunk as that guy right now. Back home, Turnbull receives a postcard from Donald and devises an idea where other executive dropouts can be trained in this new endeavor. Donald travels to US of A and meets Catherine Ross at a show, having her mess with his sack. Man, that's the 1970s for you. A guy could assault a woman in a sack, and she would just fall for you because of your prowess. They rush out of there and head back to his room. Hey, he must have changed his clothes in the cab. It turns out she's a bit of a crazy chick. Oh, I've never had any real heroes. Roger was the paper boy when I was in the seventh grade, I think. What's a paper boy? One Sunday, I snuck out of the house and met him and went on his route with him. It was almost like when we finished him, we sat on somebody's lawn and, and read the paper. I read every section, everything. I wanted him to know I was interested in his work. They have a talking montage. The topic, probably newspapers. What's a newspaper? Then we get this shot of passionate lovemaking. Donald returns and learns that Turnbull has gone full-fledged corporate with this new concept. So then Donald goes back on the road and we get another fucking travel montage. This movie is like staring out of the window of a car driving down a four-lane highway. We get some more of these overhead shots and a guy hiding up in a tree who ends up being a scared airline pilot. Hey, M. Emmett Walsh! Okay, you dumb bastard, you got 10 seconds to get the hell out of that tree! Hey, is that Super Dave Osborne? He ends up with Catherine Ross again when some guy shows up and snaps a picture. Then the shot of passionate lovemaking is reused. Donald discovers a billboard for tap dancing magicians and heads back home, which is now a huge corporate complex. He finds Turnbull hiding in a closet, nervous because they are buying out another huge company. I, I can't handle it alone, Donald. Sure you can. No, I can't. Not with executives of this caliber. Do you realize I know for a fact that one of them's had his picture in U.S. News and World Report three times? What the hell is U.S. News and World Reports? That's the Gomez look I've been waiting for. He goes back to his old look, breaking Catherine Ross's heart in the process. Another overhead shot. You're trying too hard, De Palma. After a little bit of corporate stooge activity, he grabs his sack and disappears into thin air, ending up having a family with Catherine Ross, who is too damn good for this film. The only reason to even know Get to Know Your Rabbit exists is because it's an early Brian De Palma film. That doesn't excuse it for being so damn awful. The film has a montage overload that just bores you to tears after a while. I've been more entertained by a game of tic-tac-toe. It tries to be a road picture, but Donald never really goes anywhere. John Aston's great because he's awesome, and M. 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 Walsh is a nice surprise the little time he appears on screen. I know this film has some kind of message in there, 
but it doesn't take long for you to not give a shit. Eventually, I just wanted to go home and sleep. Time now for you to strike back with all the style and wits at your command. Up yours, fella!